guys, it's your boy Eric once again with another Commotion Media video. Today's video is going to be a little different than my usual art videos because I really want to talk about different things. So we're going to talk a little more about the format. Before we jump into that, I just want to introduce you guys to a new member of the channel. Uh, there you go, man. Hey guys, it's Sound Ronin here, cutting it up live with my boy Eric. Like, share, and subscribe with your friends. Let us know if you like the format and what other topics you'd like us to talk about. And if you guys like the music in the background, check out Be The Human. The link is in the description below, as well as our socials. Follow our Instagrams, eflash77 and soundronin. All right, man. Uh, like I said, guys, this is going to be a little different. Uh, so basically, these videos will come out, and we're going to talk about different things, different news that we really want to talk about or, or that we think are worth talking about. Uh, they will be related to video games, movies, comic books, anything geek, anything nerd because that's the stuff we like and that we're passionate about. So yeah, that's what we want to talk about. Go ahead, man. So I think for the first topic that we should touch up on is Wonder Woman 1984. Now I haven't seen it personally yet, but I know you do have some thoughts on that you want to touch upon. Yes, and, and I'm actually, I'm really impressed that you have not watched the movie considering it came out in Christmas. Uh, so why, why is that? Why haven't you watched the movie, man? I think it's just an overload with all the shows from the streaming platforms. We got like the Lorian seasons. We got everything coming out now. You got Doom Squad. Oh, tons of other things that we're gonna touch up on later. But let's first let's let's hear about this Wonder Woman real quick. No, no I, I understand. Considering like I, like I think I've said this in the past, there is like a thousand streaming services now. There's HBO Max. There's uh, Amazon Prime, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus. Uh, I think there was something for like NBC or whatever, but yeah, so going back to the movie, the, the reason I really wanted to talk about this movie is because there's a lot of controversy about this movie being either a, a, a box office bomb and why that happened. So there's a couple of reasons I think this happened and the movie, I watched it, I enjoyed it. I don't think it's a great movie. I think it's not as good as the first one. Did you watch the first one, right? I did watch the first one, yes. What, what are your thoughts now, on it? Now, why do you... Now, the first one, I think it did a great job at like starting the backstory with the Amazons, where they where they came from, and all the, the timeline framing that they did and set up for like, you know, the Justice League and kind of where Wonder Woman comes from. And I think they did a great job. I personally think the casting was really great. Um, but main thing, the fight scenes were cool. But, you know, at the, the biggest, biggest showstopper was really the Ares battle at the end. And that was what really kind of brought it together for the whole ramp up. Hmm. But what do you, what didn't you like about the new one? Okay, so before you, it's funny because I did not enjoy as much the last, fi the final fight on the first movie. I thought that was like kind of weak, considering the whole war scene, like the whole uh, war scenes in the beginning when she's like walking towards bullets, like you know, like she doesn't care and all that. That was great. I think the movie is great, but the the reason why I like the first one is, is the reason I do not like this one. I think pacing is a big issue. This movie is not only uh, super long, cause it's like two hour and a half hours, which oh, man. really surprised me because when I, cause I watched this movie in theaters and I was basically along in the theater, but yeah. So the reason I did not uh, like is because I think there's a lot of things that they could have just like chopped off and no one would have noticed. And I feel like they try to, they had the uh, Spider-Man uh, Spider 3 issue. Uh, actually, actually Amazing Spider-Man 2 as well. They try to cram in a lot of different villains and a lot of different plot points and uh, instead of focusing on one thing. Because they had Maxwell Lord and they also did this cheetah plot line because they wanted to have like a final uh, like battle. But if they only did Maxwell right. Lord, they couldn't have done it because he's just a guy. <laughs> right. But and you gotta... In... And then... mm -hmm. Well, you got to have a great villain to have a great hero film. I mean, yeah. the hero's only as good as the villain. And 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 the issue with Cheetah is they did the the the, the Riddler uh, in in the old Batman movies issue that he's like a nerd and he goes bad. The same thing with uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 where Electro is just like a nerdy guy who goes bad because of reasons. They did that with Cheetah, which I think was kind of weak. And and also I think this movie could have been good in box office if they actually like I think COVID played a part when it came to to this movie being a box office bomb because it dropped sixty seven percent and I think the first week wasn't even that great. Right. Yeah. I mean, with this whole with the whole pandemic happening, I mean, 
obviously you'll see a lot of these movies that got pushed back when they were supposed to be released. Now some are getting canceled. It's a, it's a really tough time for movies in general. And, and not a lot of people are going to theaters. And I think the the reason it really wasn't great is because HBO Max released it at the same time that they released it in theaters. Uh, so why would you go to a theater considering the whole pandemic if you can watch it in your living room, right? Yeah, be no point. <laughs> yeah, no point. And 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 also, I think uh, I think they open like a week before they open the U.S. They open internationally, which open up for a lot of piracy as well. Like I'm pretty sure oh, there were, this movie was somewhere on a torrent with some Chinese uh, subtitles on. I'm 100 <laughs> percent sure. What movie is it nowadays? <laughs> right. Yeah, but like this one was a week before it released on HBO Max. Yeah, it was probably somewhere. You can't leak it like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it. I think that the other movie I can think of that had the same issue was a while back. I think it was Kick Ass Two, that the movie was released right. uh, in the U.S. and then like a month later released internationally, which basically had a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah, it meant that no one would watch it in the theaters because it was already pirate, pirate everywhere. I actually, I waited for that movie to be in theaters because I really wanted to watch it in theaters. I'm like the type of guy that I support the things I like. But yeah, that that's what I think it dropped. So this one, like I said, it, it dropped a lot in box office and it didn't have a great opening because to me, HBO Max meant that. And I think they basically, like HBO basically sacrificed this movie to see if they could like get more more, more subscribers because they saw Disney Plus success, Netflix success, and they said, maybe I want to, you know, <laughs> I want to join in this. So, so at least you think that you know the Wonder Woman franchise has potential and and has a lot of you know connection with the whole Justice League and all the other characters. This that one they just maybe presented it wrong. This one didn't feel like it connected, to be honest with you. I think they just with the rest. Okay. Yeah, they just did it. Like this is just a movie. Like you could skip it, and you probably not. So here's the thing: I enjoyed the movie, but the more I thought of it, I would hate it a little more. You know what I mean? Like it was weird. Like the more I think about the movie. I'm not, I didn't like it as much every time I thought about it. You just kept picking it apart every time. Yeah, because every time it. I thought about it, I kept thinking about all the issues with it. And that's what I think mm. made it like not as pleasant to go back. I, I don't think this is a rewatchable movie, like not not as strong as any other movie. Like a, a movie that I watch every time I can is like the Big Lebowski. Those movies, every time you watch it, you find new things. I think with this one, the more you watch it, the more errors you'll find continuity or, okay. or whatever but uh they still sign up or for a third movie which i think well if they are signing for a third movie probably they probably have big things for it i think enough people like wonder woman enough to go and see a third movie even if this one wasn't as good so but do you think with the trilogy now as we know with tons of trilogies or or uh continuing franchises sometimes a third movie is not the greatest move do you I, think they can get what they learned? They can gather what they learned from the first two movies and really hit it home with this third one. I really hope they do, because Wonder Woman is <laughs> right. is in my top three superheroes, and I know that sounds okay. like a, just a statement, but I I am a comic book buff, and I have a, a, a hundred superhero list of superheroes, and she's number three. No. no, no. Yeah, we're talking. So, we're talking uh, an Amazon woman made of clay with uh, indestructible bands, magical rope, and uh, I mean, back in the day, in fly, an invisible and flying jet. So, oh, this cool one, character. this one has the the invisible flying jet. In this oh, one, okay. But the reason they introduced it, there's a lot of issues with it. So I think like they just wanted to add that, so if someone would say, "Hey, I remember that she had an invisible jet," <laughs> but yeah, not not great. I think this movie has a lot of issues, but yeah. Okay. At least uh, she's okay. at least she's not. Uh, do you remember that when she had the invisible jet, she will it will look like she's just sitting in, in the air. This doesn't yeah, happen. And, and everyone's and that everyone would ride it with her like Superman would be. I never understood why Superman would ride shotgun in an invisible jet. Uh, I like, think I saw know, he could fly. Yeah, but I saw a thing uh, because uh, I think there's a is a uh, Justice League Crescent two or something that she has the invisible jet, and then Flash asks, "Why do you have a jet if you guys fly?" And she is like, do you have a car, Barry? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> but I mean, they can fly significantly faster than their vehicle. Yeah, Barry I know. Faster than the speed of light. Yeah, but why does he own a car then? So I, I see the point. Because well, 
I mean, he's he's the ladies' man. That's that's the point. Okay, I you see know, your point. Flash he's not gonna been the, the, the quippy guy. Like, hey, what's up? How's it going? He, he's not gonna mess Iris's hair uh, by running her through a city. I guess. I guess I see your point. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So now that you mentioned Wonder Woman and the whole connection to the Justice League, here's the next up. The next topic I really wanna I uh, really wanna talk about, which is uh, the Flash. And and the, okay. the, the 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 reason Ray Fisher Cyborg is no longer in the Flash. He's gonna be like a cameo, but there's a lot of controversy on Ray Fisher. Like, uh, I think he's reporting some harassment with uh, Josh Whedon, Whedon, and a lot of that. And I think these guys, like, if you look at Ray Fisher's IMDb page, he's done one movie or at least like two. So he's not like really big, and he got a big role. And the reason he was so sour about the whole thing is because his role got caught uh, on Just Whedon, Just Whedon's uh, Justice League. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you knew, but I mean, like uh, they they basically re re um, made a lot of scenes and re recorded a lot of different things for Justice League. So Snyder's cut is completely different to Just Whedon's cut, right? Yeah, it's really tough to even see like when you get a major superhero cut from a movie because of these, you know, little contractual things or these hiccups, you know, during production or any of this or these decisions made. Because, you know, the fans want to see, you know, all, all the big hitters there. And I think Cyborg's a big hit to take out. We're, we're talking about that could lead up to Teen Titans, you know? And that's oh, that'd be like, great. Have you seen the, the Teen Titans show? No, I see. That's also on my list, man. I'm telling you, these shows stack up fast. Yeah, watch that one. That one's pretty good, though. But but going back to Ray Fisher, I think the reason why he he got caught, he was. I think he either already recorded it, or he was going to, and then he said, Nah, maybe not. Nah, you know. And the reason why they did yeah, that yeah. is because he basically he had issues with Joss Whedon, which is fine. You can have issues with the director, but then he started attacking. Um, I think it's Warner Media, which is the owner of DC Comics right now. Warner Media's president saying that he was an enabler, although mm. that guy was hired like a year ago. So he wasn't even working for uh, for De for Warner Media when they recorded Justice League. So he, I think he basically attacked the wrong person, and that's probably why yeah. he he got kicked off. I think he, it's a bad move for him, bad move for him, considering he got a huge role and he could have really, you know had a, had fun with it and, and really grow up as a, as a as a as an actor but i don't know oh of course i mean but there's a lot you with these kind of things there's always behind the scenes things going on it's always tough to get in there or like the the whole cast you know what's going on everything but yeah it's it's tough to see it it's, it's tough to see it go you know him getting cut yeah not gonna lie i did like he's some of his scenes justice league to me is kind of wonder woman like like Wonder Woman 1984. The more you think about it, the more issues you find with it. I I'm really excited to watch a Snyder Scott when they release that on HBO Max. I I heard they invest in like 20 million or maybe more on on digital, uh, like working on the CGI parts for the for some of the battles and some of the things that were not done. Right. Uh, so I think it will be good. Like I I really want to see at least because here's the thing: Justice League may be a terrible movie. But if we see Snyder's cut, even if it's terrible, at least it's, it is one guy's vision. Because with the other version, they basically had just written, like, change the color and cut some things and add some things to some some other guy's film, which I think right, is right. Right, right. You just kind of cop copy and paste in certain sections to make it just a film. It's a whole piece. <laughs> you know what it felt like? Do you remember in school when you would... I like, ask for your friend's paper and you would just change some things and rephrase some others so no one would know that they were the same <laughs> thing. Almost, it, almost a, like exactly. So I think we got Pokemon, even if... Like Pokemon and Digimon, almost the same. Yeah, <laughs> so even if we get a shitty movie, I think we got the shittier movie first <laughs> because yeah. we got the copy or the altered version first. So, and yeah. then hopefully they learn from their lessons. Yeah. But but yeah, I agree with you. I think... I, I think he, I, I, we can know we cannot know what happens like within the film for actors and directors and all that so i i just want to see a really good flash movie flash is my second favorite uh, superhero so <laughs> see now the flash i think they did a pretty decent job even going with series for the flash because that's the only rendition other than the you know the two times that he appears in the in like the justice league and everything mm -hmm. with you know the whole crew i 
I think it works for the lore, but there are some things that do not work for me. But yeah, I, I see what you mean. Correct. Yeah, but I, I think it's just like them doing a Flash movie the right way. I think that would be a really big hit with the people. Because again, the, now the, we're talking like DC favorite heroes. It'd be Flash and Batman all day. And you got my now, first one. Green Lantern <laughs> is Green, Green Lantern is there. I just feel that he's in Hollywood. He's been given a really bad shake, and now oh. no one wants to touch it with a ten foot pole. No one. But you know, I, I, but, you I, know, I if, if, if you want to talk about Green really Lantern, right. if they want to talk Green Lantern, I think Ryan Reynolds. I love him so much, but I think his Green Lantern movie ruined Hal Jordan. So maybe if they want to do a Green Lantern movie, they have to go John Stewart or Kyle Rayner. They cannot go Hal Jordan. Honestly, I think John Stewart all the way. John Stewart all the way, because I, 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 I grew up watching him. Like, I, I love, I, I think the first comic books I read for Green Lantern were Rebirth, which is when Hal Jordan comes back, yeah. which that's why he's my favorite Lantern. But I think based on me watching as a kid, a lot of people know John Stewart more than they knew Hal Jordan because they watched Justice League and it was John Stewart. But also, I mean, finally having another black superhero. I think we have tons of white superheroes. You no, know, change up the diversity. There's tons of good. Yeah, you and, know, and also, and also, it. and like sexes. It's like, come on, and, like, and, bring, in, bring a new one to the and, and also, the good thing about John Stewart being a black hero is that he he does not feel forced because he's always been there, and he was literally the second Green Lantern from Earth. So I think it's great. Yeah. I think John Stewart would definitely work. Also, he's a Marine, so he's a badass, right? And it's like a down-to-earth kind of story you can get behind, you know? Yeah. He's a guy, fought for his country, has this power, and he, he's he's here to protect. It's yeah. a very, very at-home kind of thing. Hell you know? yeah. It really resonates. They could even, like, maybe do, like, him in, like, just try and renew the whole lore for a movie. Like, maybe have him become a Green Lantern while he's in Iraq or something. That would be incredible if they oh, did Oh, yeah, that. like, in a missed battle. Yeah, like a whole thing. Yeah, that yeah. would be too. Yeah, man. All right, so let's move on to our next topic. Uh, which would be Suicide Squad. We're, we're with uh, DC now, starting with DC. So I know you okay. don't know a lot about this film, right? I've watched the first one. I know... <laughs> I just... I don't know too much about the comic book renditions of it, like all the lore for it, but I've, I know some of more of the modern stuff for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the reason uh, with this one could really work, uh, it's first they 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 did um they hired james gunn which to me already works i think he's done great with with guardians of the galaxy did a great job with those i believe on all of them yeah mm -hmm. uh i mean yeah the the second one is arguably not as good as the first one but again now you have to give sequels a, a chance because i mean he was continuing a storyline but I think as far as what it led up to, how he integrated the Guardians of the Galaxy, I think it I think it did a great job. Yeah, also I, I I'm really I'm really thing. still waiting for that for that Adam Warlock uh story links. We we got some of that right. in the in the end. We got a teaser. That's yeah. what we got. We got a little dangling piece of food on a string just waiting for us. Yeah. So for for this this one, I don't know if you just okay, you're seeing my screen. It looks goofy as hell. Which to me can really work because there's a lot of Suicide Squad things that are really goofy and really old school. So we, we could either go full Batman Begins and make it super dark and gritty, or we can just embrace the goofiness of it and have fun with it. Like you see, Idris Elba here looks like super badass, and I'm I think this is John Cena on his left, and he looks he looks like super goofy, which is I think it's works clunky. great. Yeah. I think that's in purpose. I mean, there's a retro feel to it. I think it's a homage, you know. People, true fans would like to see like the the true colors, you know, of the costume, how they used to ring out on the paper. And and also look at this huge list of of, of characters. Like they they got Margot Robbie back as Harley Quinn. I really hope yeah. they write it better than they did in the Suicide Squad or Harley Quinn, because it wasn't as good. I think the, there's a lot of issues with the character. Like it doesn't feel like the same character all the movie. Which is an issue, but like you yeah. see, same guy as Rick Flag, so they might do some goofy things uh, with the plot, with the story, because Viola Davis is coming back as well. But then uh, Jay Courtney is coming back. But then we have Bloodsport, which I think is basically that they re they replacing Will Smith as as that shit with Idris Elba's Bloodsport, because they're really similar in the sense that they're basically leaders of the Suicide Squad. 
Right. And then we have John Cena's Peacemaker. Fun fact: Peacemaker is actually the guy they based off to make to to create the comedian in the Watchmen days when they actually created the comic. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, okay. No, I did not. Yeah, the, Peter Capaldi is the thinker. If you know who's Peter Capaldi, he's basically Doctor Who. So I think it's great that he's gonna be the thinker. I just want him to be really like a really stupid plotline that goes nowhere because the thinker is kind of a goofy character. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we, we got Javelin. Well, ja- see some more of that. Yeah, Javelin Rat Catcher Two, which makes like it's funny because there's a lot of versions. Like comic books have a lot of, uh, like man, like uh, what's his name? Um, the guy from Batman that's like. Clayface, there's like three different clay faces. So the fact that they have Rat Catcher 2 is just hilarious to me. They have uh, just tons of variations in the it, comics, of course. Yeah, so Polka Dot Man, that's that's the guy on this on the on the scene right here. <laughs> Polka Dot Man. That, so they basically I think James Gunn is having a lot of fun uh, fun with it. Sean Gunn is being the whistle, which kind of is a is a bring back to Sean Gunn being uh Rocket Raccoon on screen. I mean on, on set. Yeah. So yeah, man. I just I, I, the one I'm excited about is Nathan Fillion, because to me Nathan Fillion at, at some point in his life was the perfect Green Lantern. If we get back to what we were talking before, uh, and I don't know if you knew, but Nathan Fillion has been the voice of Green Lantern a lot of times. In like that, I actually knew. Yeah, in the, in the old animated series. Yeah, and also I think I think James Gunn is bringing all his friends because uh, Nathan Fillion was in Guardians of the Galaxy one as one of the aliens, so you couldn't see him, but he was his voice. Oh, the voice actor. Okay. Yeah. Also, Pete Davidson is a great comedian. I want to see him as Blackguard because he's like super skinny guy. So maybe it works. I don't know. I want to see it. But yeah, there's not a lot. Uh, there's a trailer for it, which is really interesting. They're just talking about the movie. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm really excited about this one. I think this one will work better than the first one, which I had a hard time finishing. <laughs> see, I, I don't know. I mean, like, they're, look, they're keeping Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Which, again, we did like her character, but like you said, it was very lackluster. I think she was just with a bunch of one-liners that yeah. really didn't delve into the character of Harley Quinn and who she was. It wasn't really paying attention. Just, you know, she said her her little quips and that was it. Next scene. Yeah, I heard that, that they basically chopped off the movie in a way that kind of ruined her plot, like her plots in general, because they chopped all the Joker stuff. But I think it's probably better because that Joker was painful to watch but at the end of the movie i just felt like yeah it was basically one-liners and no actual like nothing to her character and i think that's it's it's crazy that they actually bring the the joker in the movie period because like we're we're now like taking away and i think that's another thing of the movie why it didn't hit so so well is that you're detracting from the original storyline to show a little bit more of harley quinn's but like the Joker, don't get me wrong, I love Jared Leto as an actor, but the take of the Joker that they did, which is just I think favorites. I think he'll probably work better as very... Morbius. I think he'll work better as Morbius. He was cast yeah, as Morbius. I, I would have even liked, it, liked the direction of like Arkham Knight, where that could have been Robin, you know, not the real Joker. Oh, just, yes, yes. I think they you know, say they want to be Arkham Jason kind of exactly it could yeah. have been just jason todd and that's why he has the tattoos like the j on his face and all the other tattoos that the joker physically tattooed on him when he was torturing him that... you know i was like oh that would have been a cool play because i would be like i can accept him not being the real joker and this would have been way better yeah basically just a kid being dumb trying to yeah yeah i would have liked that actually and that, he's in love that's... and he's in love you know and he's just going crazy for that's perfect that's our joke that could have worked yeah i can see i can see that working on screen but they didn't (laughs) they just ruined it yeah they just they just threw up the alley-oop and it just didn't slam it okay so now that we talk okay so i talked about uh him being morbius uh so maybe he will work on that there's not a lot of it but since we jumped into some marvel things i I think we're gonna talk disney now all right so let's move on to the next topic which is a lot of things coming for star wars star wars is gonna get a lot of things and i think this is all thanks to the mandalorian I think the Mandalorian actually kicked their whole franchise into light speed. Yes. <laughs> for no, for a, a no other way of phrasing it, because I think it really showed how well Disney could do breaking in that whole franchise into series instead of movies. I think they just want to go yeah. like Marvel did. I think the reason why it works for Star Wars, and, and, and I think it probably worked better than it will for Marvel, 
is because I think Star Wars has a lot of, of, of fans that will watch hours and hours of content happily. Because as a, as a fan, I've always watched anything Star Wars, everything that comes out, I will watch. And I wasn't really a fan of the the last, like, the trilogy. I was a fan of Rogue One, but everything, like, Star Wars, Disney movies were not as good. Like, Solo was weak. Uh, the Force mm-hmm. Awakens was all right, but then the other two movies were weaker. Like, increasingly weaker because they had the same issue that it was not one guy's vision. They had, like, two different directors. So, kind of... And you're also continuing something that started, you know, way back when, you know? We're, we're talking about like six movies worth of information and just to even keep that continuity mm-hmm. you know it's hard to I, I, that, that I, train on the rails i think the reason it did not work i mean the, the first awakens worked a little more is because they had a lot of nostalgia and it coming back having han solo again having uh leia again and luke and all that it was like a lot of people were excited to see those characters again but then they right. kept just showing the characters and thinking that was enough to drag people in but the plot was weak, so basically it was just a nostalgia reading plot, which wasn't as good. Because there's a lot of things that happen that do not make sense, like the the Millennium Falcon just being on that planet as a whole coincidence wasn't really, you know, it's strong writing right. to me. But, and also, Ray was on the same planet. Like, yeah. No one thought that, like, they left both of them there. And it, she happens you know? to be Palpatine's... Durant. There's a lot of issues with it. But the, 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 the reason I want to focus on these things is because Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of the shows that I'm really excited about. Because Obi-Wan is my favorite character out of the whole mo- the whole Star Wars universe. I think he's a great character. He has a lot of flaws because he's not he wasn't trained completely. And that's why I think it reflects on Anakin being so, like, such a, a bad uh, character, if you think about it. Even though he was strong, he was never a great Jedi. Because of the well, way I mean, Anakin was turned, Anakin was technically turned away from the Jedi. Academy. You know, it was never, it was never like he was never really meant to be trained. And I think Obi Wan did the best he could. Yeah, and, and 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 I think, and I think he probably feels mission. the reason he takes care of of the of Luke and Leia, at least trying to find a place for them, is because he feels responsible of what happened to Anakin. Of and, course. Yeah, and and I think the character is really good, and if they focus on the whole plot and those i think it's like 30 years between the clone wars and i mean it feels it should be like 20 years because i don't think luke is way older than that but he aged like 50 years but at least at least they can focus on that plot i think they wanted to get some uh, darth maul plot lines in there because that darth maul did not die in the phantom menace so i can i think that could work I mean, as we saw with the Mandalorian, I mean, spoilers, but Boba Fett. Yeah. We thought we thought a character was gone, and uh, lo and behold, he comes back a badass. So here's the thing: I never really thought he was dead because the Dark Horse comic uh, comic book uh, universe basically explored him getting out of the pit alive. So okay. I I was never really one of the oh Bobovitz that I, I I think he was way more badass than that that I like so simply so at least at least they're gonna explore that which is good uh, and also I th- I think that I heard that Hayden Christensen is now confirmed yeah it says here to reprise his role as well as Darth Vader so it will be good I I feel like this I just hope the, the writing is good I I really want John Favreau to be like orchestrating the whole thing like jo- John Feige Feige did. Uh, with Marvel, but with John Favreau. Yeah, I think if they give the Obi Wan kind of, and they and they just don't try to rush it as much, just to like cater to like you know just the market, because now you've got time. If you do a series, do it right instead of two hours, do it right with like seven hours. Yeah, you don't have to cram in everything season. in two hours. You can do ten hours exactly. or or even less you than can that. Really... And you could really drive home certain points with time and like character development. That just takes, you know, time on the screen. You know, yeah. there's certain moments in a movie that like sometimes it's just silence, but it's the it's the timing and the uh, the whole like you know the whole soundscape, mm-hmm. and what the actors are doing and the emotion invoked in the scene. That sometimes you know a scene will go on for five minutes, nothing happens, but you understand that sense of feeling. You can't do that in a movie. Yeah. certain movies you know especially with star wars 
people want to see lightsabers and explosions. Yeah, and also, like I said, uh, I mentioned this to to you before. I don't think Disney understands lightsabers, but yeah. So uh, the 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 things I think that will work, like Obi Wan Kenobi, will work or might work. Ahsoka uh, will probably work as well because it's a really strong character. Things that I'm not sure that will work as well probably rangers of the new republic because those are basically just like side characters that we're gonna focus on and i've seen comic books where they focus on guys that are just like on the background and they're not as good Andor could be either really good or really bad <laughs> based and yeah. there's not really need for it because it's just trying to base on 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 cajun Andor from rogue one uh mm -hmm. so i'm not sure it might be a, a solo movie without han solo which is basically cajun Andor. Acolytes, not sure will work either. I don't know if it's supposed to be her, but this looks like one of the girls from she's in. I think it's Battlestar Galactica. I forgot her name. Uh, uh yeah, I, I'm blanking on her name. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if she is, but she looks like the the Mandalorian girl, like the 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 the, the chief Mandalorian in in that that comes like they take their helmets off. She also looks like her, but I'm not sure. The Bat Batch, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, so, it, I think I hear, yeah, it's from the Clone Wars, but I'm not sure if it will work. Uh, Lando, I think we can, they kind of ruined their chances with Lando on Solo because the whole plot line yeah. of him having a, a robot girlfriend wasn't great. But I just think that the, the, ca the character in general, they didn't really wow me. No. With, like his uh, storyline or background or like any achievements or really i mean at that point lando i just really remember from the original movies and and, and also that's really where he had i think they messed up because i love donald glover like this guy is so good in atlanta and, and everything he does it's a, oh it's a yeah shame. yeah i think he's amazing it's just that he was given a role that he was you know because they i can imagine disney had their hand controlling every movement he made <laughs> yeah yeah so uh visions not sure what it is uh, they haven't released much about it a droid story feels like there was an old uh tv show about r2d2 and, and c3po i don't know if you knew about it not sure it could work no, unless they're like shorts like something on the background of movies yeah, that could work if, if the animation was really nice and like they they kind of went about more of a samurai jack mentality just really stuck to the soundtrack and just like visuals of Ooh. the robot because again r2d2 we're talking he just beeps that's how he communicates love the samurai jack idea Samurai jack is you know top 10 of my shows of all time so yeah i agree with you and mandalorian season three is bound to be successful even if they sh uh yeah. if they screw it i think everyone's in love with that show so even if it's bad yeah. at least they'll get enough people to watch it to make a fourth i mean season I, they definitely have a, an, another watcher that season. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Could you repeat that? I think you broke up, and maybe I'm just gonna uh, mark. Could you write down the timeline? It's 33 seconds. I think you broke down a little. So maybe you can okay, no say that again. Okay. So say that again, please. Okay. So I, I think really that they have another person, you know, gonna tune in for season three because this is the way. Yeah. This is the way I like that. Okay, so uh, next, uh, upcoming Marvel TV shows. What are your thoughts on it? Do you think they will work? Do you think they will not? Do you think enough people will watch it, or people are tired of Marvel? Because I've, I've heard that before. Well, well, let's let's take a quick move move uh, move on to Netflix, where we have some Marvel TV show, shows already, like Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, The Defenders, all together. Iron now, Fist. Two of them. Iron Fist. Now, I didn't mention Iron Fist because I wasn't a fan totally, but we can get into that later. Yeah. Daredevil, Luke Cage, I think they did a really good job of humanizing the the superhero on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I think that's what a series can do better. I think... Really, again, character, character development. Mm -hmm. I think they can really get into the character and get you in the, their life. And it allows you to, to have such a, a bigger view on you know how the character's thinking how they would react because the mandalorian does such a great job of of really portraying how the mandalorian lives his life how he lives by the code and every can everyone can really resonate with that almost you know yeah okay so here's the thing i agree with you daredevil was a perfect show i enjoyed the whole three seasons i think punisher did it good as well they they had yes, great they chemistry great writing great everything yes. 
Jessica Jones does it as well. It feels more like a detective show, which is great. I think Luke Cage right. and- at first was good, but then after Cottonmouth, I'm not going to spoil it, but after he's out of the show, I think the show falls flat because they just went to basically Luke Cage kicking everyone, which is good, but I think they just could have you know, done better with the story. So I think it works with uh, Jessica Jones, Punisher, and Daredevil. It did not work as much with Luke Cage. They ruined it with Iron Fist, even though I was really excited when it when it was announced because I'm a, a Danny Rand fan. But yeah, uh, Defenders ball. Defenders was kind of good, but the plot was kind of weak, and they kind of wanted to extend Daredevil's plot. Which okay, yeah. so here's the thing with Marvel: some shows of Marvel will be really success, success, successful, like. Uh, definitely one division will be successful because of right. you know having Wanda and see what's happening with her powers that's great Loki will probably be successful as well because it's you know it's uh, what's it's Asgard it's, it's Thor it's, it's the whole story yeah and Tom Hiddleston has a thing with ladies a lot of girls really into him and they will watch it regardless and cool. Falcon and the Winter Soldier might work I think this one has a lot of potential but also a lot of places where they could just drop the ball because well, I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. now with the, the the whole you know the infinity series like the the whole civil war all that after that happened i mean we're talking you know new captain america almost yeah and and you know here's the thing is big shoes to fill i've read in comics in comic books uh winter soldier becoming captain america wasn't as, as successful and i've read uh um What's his name? Uh, well, Falcon becoming uh, Captain America as well, and it wasn't. Uh, it, it was even more. I mean, less successful than um, Bucky Barnes was, because people want to see Steve Rogers, and he's the actual Captain America. So I'm not sure this one. If they do like a spy spy thriller show, they might make it work. If they just try to yeah. make like a road to next Captain America, I'm not sure how well that will work. So we'll see. I think that that's uh, we'll see. What if? It's basically just shorts. I'm not sure this one will work. I saw the trailer and I wasn't really amused by it. Um, there might be one that I want to watch, which is the one way where they, like, John Doe picks up Black Panther instead of, like, uh, T'Challa instead of um, instead of Star-Lord, which I'm not sure will work. But the, the, the whole what-if thing, if they want to go all out like if they did in the comics, they could make it work. But if they just try and remake the movies with some little changes, I'm not sure how how well that will work. Well, I think Black Panther was a, a was a was a great storyline that they could really bring into the series. You know, you can get in the life of Wakanda. And yeah, really, but 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 you know, what if they're just gonna focus on uh, T'Challa going to space? So I'm not sure, and, and as a kid, uh, so I'm not sure yeah. how how well that will work. Yeah, because then if you're not in Wakanda. Yeah, you, you're basically ruining your your, your most like interesting point. Your whole about origin, it. everything. And and exactly. honestly, I would have really liked if they didn't kill uh Errol Kill- Eric Killmonger in Black Panther because he was a great villain and a great character. Because right, th- Eric Killmonger to me too. had the same effect as Magneto, where you know he's bad, but you can agree with some of his points. That's what I think worked for me with Eric Killmonger. But then right, they ruined also, it with. That, I mean, with the controversial thing with Killmonger because technically he was a part of Wakanda, his family bloodline. He's he is a yeah, Wakandan. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and not just that, had, they built the character. He had the rightful claim. And yeah. he had a he, and his father got killed when he was a kid, which also makes him understand like you understand his reasons for it. It's just like Magneto, you know he's wrong with his methods or the way he makes he does things, but you know he's kind of right to some degree, right? But then course, they ruined that. Would kill mutants. Yeah. yeah, and then they ruined that with a CGI fight that looked like trash. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. And, and okay, so uh, I don't want to talk about Hawkeye and all those shows. I don't think. I mean, those will probably get some viewing, but lo- a lot of people are now like really looking forward to it, like hardcore. Moon Knight, I am though. Oscar Isaac, it's a great cast for it, I think. Um, yeah. No, definitely. And but, uh, that's another just. Kind of like a Daredevil Batman ass person, you know, like yeah. a guy in a suit. Moon Knight, it's a hundred percent white Batman. Yes, also a little yeah. more crazy, but yeah. I had this yeah. comic book where he's 
talking to Captain America, uh, Spider-Man, and Wolverine, and then you realize that he's actually he's schizophrenic, so he's actually just thinking that he sees him and he dresses as him, as them, and, and fights people dressed as as Batman. I mean, as as Spider-Man and stuff. It's crazy. He's he's crazy, and I think that could work. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. so I, I think, think it's Disney a nice take on like mental health, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But the thing is, I think the the mo like the the horses that they should bet on are basically WandaVision, uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier, and Loki. That's what they should be aiming. After that, I think they're just trying to have a lot of different things coming up. Cause I I have Disney Plus, I have Netflix, I have Amazon Prime, and when when it gets to it, Amazon Prime has a lot of shows. Netflix has a lot of shows, but Disney Plus only has like nostalgia, like old shows and stuff that you you've seen before and you just want to rewatch. But there's not a lot of sure. original new things coming besides the Mandalorian. And like, I think that's what they want. They just want to they just want to fill in the you know the shelves, <laughs> have something right. so people can keep watching and not unsubscribe. just new content. Yeah. yeah, like Netflix did at some point where they had like a thousand new shows that were canceled in the first or second season right but yeah so okay so our last one and now we want to close on, on marvel that we're talking about marvel oh crap okay one sec oh i passed it again okay okay there we go it's fantastic four you you brought this topic so tell me your thoughts yeah so fantastic four now we have a franchise that has been done twice one with three films and another one where i i'm glad they didn't continue yeah, but we're talking, we're talking a family of superheroes. The with, first family, with also one of yeah, first family with also one of my favorite villains, Doctor Doom. He's my favorite and, too. And I think, yeah, and I think you know Doctor Doom through the comics has made some big plays against the Avengers and and Earth as a as a really big villain. We're oh. talking like you yeah. know Infinity Gauntlet kind of status level. Do you know he's on I the on the they... source wall, right? Really? And that's a DC thing. He's so powerful that he's on DC Comics source wall. That's how powerful he is. Um, see, and I, I think that, like, you know, they had a vision for it, and then they brought Galactus, which another, you know, we're talking, you know, universe-style villain. You know, we're talking uh, yeah. on par with, I would say, you know, Thanos, because we're talking a world leader villain. Okay, you know, be, before you go, you go deeper into that, did you like uh, Fantastic Four 2? No. Okay. Yeah, because here's the thing. No, I, I like the way Silver Surfer looked, but that was as, as far as I go with it. That's it. Aesthetic-wise, I think they did great, but storyline-wise, it, it wasn't anything. Went up and fought the Fantastic Four, and then it was, oh, snap. Actually, I'll try to help you save the planet. It was... It was kind of just a, an hour and a half minutes of just, you know, waste my time. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that too. Also, fun fact, uh, Fantastic Four uh, Silver Surfer movie had three people playing uh, Silver Surfer. One was the face, one was the body, and one was, another one was the voice, which is crazy if you think about it. The only other I mean, time I've seen that is Darth Vader. Other than that, that's him. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, I think like, they did him well, just... Put him in a bad script. You know, very not great situations, to be fair. I mean, I think they just kind of let the ball fall on that one. And gimmicky writing and one-liners. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the thing and clobbering time. Very yeah, classic. It's clobbering time. But I, they just, yeah, they just made it very cheesy. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Like I, I see why you're afraid of a new movie. I just think based on the whole multiverse and, 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 and timelines split because of uh, Endgame and all that, I think they can really make this work. I really, really want this to be... I don't want to see another Fantastic Four origin. I want to see an already established team since Reed Richards is the smartest person in the Marvel Universe. He's number one. There's no one smarter than him. I really want him to be like hopping from another dimension to this to the like main uh 616 or whatever the movie universe is called because of the whole uh mess that they did with the plot uh, with the timelines uh that they have to fix something and i want to see an older richards like an actual 
like not a kid. I, that's why I didn't like about the 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 2014 was it uh, Fantastic Four? The newer one, yeah. The newer one, yeah. The the also they really did Doctor Doom bad in that one. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I I would give Doctor Doom the first series Doctor Doom definitely a little bit a little bit better, but still uh, I still think they could have really made him. A really big part of all this. Yeah, all the I, I feel like they really have to explore his origin, like his Latveria uh, royalty origin. I think they should really nail that in. He's a... The reason why he's such a high... Like, he thinks so highly of himself is because he's basically royalty of some country. Fictional or marital country, but still. And and also, I think... If, okay, so casting choices is what I really want to talk about. There's not a lot about this movie... Everyone wants John Krasinski to be casted as Richards. He was originally going to be casted as Captain America, but Chris Evans got that role, which is good because I think Chris Evans is perfect for it. I think uh, he did a great job, yeah. No, he he's perfect casting. If you ask me, he's as good a casting as Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Like, they're perfect for the characters they were chosen for. Definitely. But uh, John Krasinski, I think he can work because he can be like... Uh, you know, he's strong, but he... He does. He can be. Uh, he can give us a like a badass vibe, like in Jack Ryan, but he can be really like a like a deep thought kind of guy. Like the guy that you know is more of a planner than an action person, but he can do action as well. You know what I mean? Right. I think. I think it's just that he he comes from. You know, everyone knows him. Jim Halp. You can support setting. You could really bring Reed Richards into a new light. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I think the, the 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 reason I'm really concerned about the casting is because everyone wants uh, Emily Blunt, is it? His wife, uh, John Krasinski's wife, to be Sue Storm because they have great chemistry, obviously. Because I don't know if you've seen A Quiet Place, but they work great in that sh- in that movie, and I think they can make it work. Like you you believe it, they are a couple, and that's something that not always works in movies, right? Right, of course. And we're talking to Reed Richards, Susan Storm. They're they're a pretty close knit couple. Yeah, they're they're as good a couple. I think that's one of the few couples in Marvel that are still together throughout the years. Not even because Tony Stark is being with Pepper. He's been single. He's been with other people. I think not even Ant Man and the Wasp has been have been together as long as Richards and Sue Storm. No, which is yeah, they're from like original, yeah. Yeah, and and I think they can make it work. So who would you cast for for the thing or, or or Human Torch? See that is tough because Human Torch has to be this ladies' man kind of charismatic guy, but he still has to bring a certain seriousness, which I just think Chris Evans didn't do in the series. Which I'm I'm so glad he did the the changeover. You know, change the superhero. <laughs> you take the actor out of that one superhero, put him in another one, did great. Kind of the same thing with Ryan Reynolds. From it, it, it has worked a couple of times, because if you think about it, the second Human Torch was Eric Killmonger. So. You know, exactly. Yeah. So I, at that point, we could, you know, just bring someone from a movie, but that's kind of tough, because I would like to see blood in Human Torch. I saw a rumor about casting um, Liam Hemsworth I think I could buy him yeah. as the Human Torch. Not gonna lie, I think that I could buy him as the Human Torch. Uh, yeah, I could, I could see him. You know, like shaven face, and beard, but yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, I heard rumors about um, Zach Evron. I heard rumors about. Um, Tar- see, I can see Zach Efron being as a pretty boy. As long as he took it a little bit serious, that I just feel like it would say it would say. Uh, kind of like gimmicky kind of trying to get a funny role i think that the 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 reason he will work is because he's a little younger and that works we need him to be that's true older but not uh, i mean i mean younger but not as young like he has to be 30 something for it to work right and i we're talking an established team yes correct correct and they also wanted to do ben graham the the one i would probably love to see as the uh, as as the thing and and have him really nail down a role because he's a good actor but hasn't good hasn't had the chance to and I and I meant he had the chance but not as good. Uh the guy from Stranger Things that was Hellboy on the newer Hellboy. 
uh what's his name oh yeah 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 uh, David uh, Harbour, right? Isn't that yeah, his name? David Harbour. Yeah, he could yeah, work yeah. as the thing because he's already a big guy, and he he has that warm personality that I think could work. I just think he has that. He plays well that gritty kind of like, rough around the edges kind of character. But and and how like you said in Stranger Things, that lovableness that he could soften up, but you see him as a hard ass, and I think that would really you know, bring the thing to life. And I think he'd be a perfect cast for that. Yeah, me too. That That's my, like, if I had to cast, it would probably be uh, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, Zach Evren, and David Harbour. 100%. And that would be an interesting crew to see, like, all together as a family. Right? I think that, that could work. But yeah, so I, that... You know what? Now that I think, I think now him as a thing and Zach as the human torch, I could see them really getting at each other like nitpicking and like messing yes. with each other how you would see in the original human torch yes thing always like playing pranks on each other yeah like, yeah and he would get so mad i, I think that would and, well. and that's the thing about uh david harbour as the thing that could work like he's an older guy but you can see him pranking another guy that's exactly. even if it's younger you can see him he has that personality that you can tell that he's a prankster with his friends so that could work Definitely. But yeah, I think so. That those are the things that we wanted to talk about. Uh, this is probably a longer video than we thought it would be, <laughs> but I had a lot well, of fun. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was a great first time of me coming into the channel. So thank you much, so much for having me. Yeah, man. I I really want this format to go for long. We want to talk about movies. We might have some videos where it's just you or just me, but we I think the both of us talking is a good thing. And if you guys think uh, you agree with us, definitely let us know in the comments below. Any other news or topics you want us to talk about, just put it in the comments. We promise we'll read every comment and probably reply to every comment, but we'll definitely read it. And yeah, uh, any last thoughts, um, man? Uh, other than let's all pray for Mandalorian Season 3 to really finish up on a good note, and that's all. I mean, I hardly know that the second season, which we're not going to spoil, <laughs> I think will be hard, exactly. but I'm waiting for it 100%. But it's de it's definitely going to be coming up on the following chats that we have, 100%. Yeah, so again, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below what you want us to talk about. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time we drop a new video. We're dropping a lot of content, art content, music content, sports content. Uh, and now geek content as well uh, so let us know in the comments below like share and subscribe and thanks for watching have a good one take care guys